Okay, so g'day. And? Well, I went to another site today. I had the geology just totally wrong. I thought it was Dolorite, but apparently now I'm in Dolorite country because I didn't look at the geological map beforehand. And it looks like the tide is coming in. So, eventually the tide's going to be all the way up to here. So you don't really have long to have a look at this rock. So as you can see, it's pretty wet as it is. So apparently this is the Tolerite, no, uh, Dolerite. Which is fine grain igneous rock. So this is supposed to have been formed in the seal bed, I don't know, 100, 140 million years ago during the Jurassic, 140, 150. I haven't looked at the actual geological dating of this rock. And I don't know too much about the geology. So I'm in Tasmanian ones, let's just have a look. And this seems to be quite weathered. This is the fresh stuff here. It's quite nice. So, this dolerite is pretty much like a basalt or a gabbro in its composition. So a lot of mafic minerals, not too much quartz or feldspars. So it's a dark color. And as you can see, it's a dark color. And I can feel, it feels like sandy. It feels sandy. Uh, but with my eyesight these days, I can't really make out the actual grain structure, the actual rock. And you can see it has a cleavage. So here's one cleavage plane. Uh, this has no cleavage, and this side just fractures in any which way. Uh, but it looks like that one. So it's not 90 degrees, probably 80 or 70 degrees, which would be the actual cleavage. But that I need to look up. That's why it it breaks off not at a 90 degrees. So you got 80. That's probably like 120 degrees going that way. So that is tolerate. That's pretty weathered. So this this uh, brownish colour is highly weathered. The less weathered rock will be the darker bluish. See there. As you can see, this is quite massive. And it looks like it has slaty cleavage. That could be just uh, the actual faulting of the rock. A bit like columnar basalt, no. So this intruded the sedimentary rock that's around here so the sedimentary rock is down that way so over that side is sedimentary rock it's about I think it's called the Parami group it's about 200 million years ago and looks like on top we have uh, looks like a conglomerate could be just weathering process in which this is the form of beachhead so this has been weathered lower so this has been weathered lower this is the form of beachhead in which the eroded material that was rounded by the actual beach has to be deposited here and as the erosion process has gone down so that used to be the form of beach this is just guessing actually uh, it's just been left up high as you can see, this is the current bench, and we have rounded material from where the actual waves have come up and washed on here. So, in high energy environments, this rock will be deposited here, but I don't see that as enough energy to actually transport rubble. So, there's enough energy to move the sand around. But this is probably just rounded in place, I would say. And that is probably also why it is up here, because it is also the fresher material. But it depends on what's back there. 
looks like we've got rounded cobbles up there so maybe this is like a a former river environment because it is like a little bit of a bay and I don't see any of the actual rock formation see in between the two sides we have this dip I don't see any rock formation just these rounded cobbles so maybe this was a former river or something like that don't know I'm just guessing here because I haven't really found read too much information about the geology of Tasmania so uh, underneath this sand is basement rock and here we have a what's left of a crab so that will eventually be broken up and probably the sand matrix looks like it's probably made of calcium carbonate And probably just the finer grains of the dolerite. So this one's just covered in organisms. That's why it's a greyish colour. And the darker colour is weathered. Yeah, but when you feel it, it just feels like sand. So obviously the grain size is quite large. And this is basically all the geology here. So this dolerite makes up a large portion of western Tasmania. From what I've read, it's just a great big seal. Obviously, it probably wasn't intruded all at once. It's probably intruded and I'd say layered over each other. So if you don't know what a seal is, so we've got the geological structure there. And then we have lava. So we've got geological structure, then we've got lava that comes in here forms like a seal and now I reckon it's probably just over time it's just built up to a large formation and it makes up a massive portion uh, this stuff also makes up dikes but as you can see I don't see any layering in that and this is just all fracturing from when it's actually cooled down and also erosion so weathering and erosion has broken down the minerals. Obviously the mineralogy there is uh, be quite different than uh, fresh material. So anyway, this is the dolerite. The best place you can see this is on coastal exposures and also road cuttings. Apart from that, it's pretty hard to get to. So that's why I'm on the coast. And I think my gimbal's about to die because it keeps on a bit of a going in here. Seaweed. Yum, 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 yum. Mom, 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 mom. So out offshore, there is a lot of kelp beds. Obviously, you can't get to that. It's covered in a lot of organisms. Also, the salt water. We have changed the actual surface of the uh, uh, rock formation. So it's no longer the actual horn blend biotites that you can find in rock. It would be some other type of mineral. And these all break down into clays eventually. Or be incorporated into another rock, like here. So anyway, that's a bit of my shit talk today. Uh, I need to read up about the geology of this place before I actually make up crap about what I'm talking about. Thank you. Goodbye.